Today I'm going over some of Psalm 104, and as always, I pray the Holy Spirit gets this to the right person at the right time. Starting in verse 1. Praise the Lord, my soul. Lord, my God, you are very great. You are clothed with splendor and majesty. Now, there are going to be times when you feel led to pray to God and talk to God, get in his presence, but sometimes you're really not sure what to say. But that's not always a bad thing. Really, you got to take it by a case-by-case, situation-to-situation basis. Sometimes God wants you to play worship music, sing along. Sometimes God wants you to sing. Sometimes God wants you to just thank him, be grateful. Sometimes God just wants some quiet time with you, just sitting quietly in his presence, just you and him. One way of looking at that specific situation is, imagine your grandparents. Your grandparents, even if they're healthy, Because of their age, they can't get around and do things like they used to, so they might ask you to come over and help them out. Could be with yard work, garden work, round the house, whatever the case is. But sometimes they just want you to come over and just spend some time with you. It can be kind of like that with God, too. Sometimes God just wants to spend time with you, even if it's just you and him sitting quietly together. Verse 2, the Lord wraps himself in light as with a garment. He stretches out to the he stretches out the heavens like a tent and lays the beams of his upper chambers on their waters. He makes the clouds his chariot and rides on the wings of the wind. He makes the winds his messengers, flames of fire his servants. Now, in verse 3, when it was talking about the clouds and the chariot, I don't remember where in. If I remember correctly, it was Revelations, where it says that when Jesus comes back, he's going to be riding on a cloud to come rapture up his people. Verse 5, he set the earth on its foundations. It can never be moved. You covered it with the watery depths as with a garment. The waters stood above the mountains, but at your rebuke the waters fled, and the sound of your thunder they took to flight. Now, I've noticed this throughout the whole Bible, but something that really comes to mind in those last couple of verses is we can imagine certain things that the Bible describes, but we won't. Some things we won't really know what it's going to look like until we actually see it. Verse 8. They flowed over the mountains. They went down into the valleys to the place you assigned for them. You set a boundary they cannot cross. Never again will they cover the earth. And the waters of the ocean, that's one thing that still kind of blows my mind. Whether it's a tsunami, or just the regular ebb and flow of each tide throughout the day. Have you ever noticed that the waters of the oceans can only come up to a set point and they always have to go back, go back to where they were? Throughout the entire world, on every single beach, wherever there's water of the ocean, it always has to come to a certain point, stop, and go back throughout the entire world. And God knows every single little piece of it. God commands all of the oceans to come to a certain point and go back. All of it. Let that sink in. Verse 9. You set a boundary. Oh, you set a boundary they cannot cross. Never again will they cover the earth. He makes springs pour water into the ravines. It flows between mountains. They give water to all the beasts of the field. The wild donkeys quench their thirst. The birds of the sky nest by the waters. They sing among the branches. He waters the mountains from his upper chambers. The land is satisfied by the fruit of their work. 
in verse 12 when it was talking about the birds of the sky, another verse came to mind, something Jesus said. Think of the birds of the air. They neither reap nor st- they neither reap nor sow nor store in barns, and yet your heavenly Father provides for them. How much more will God provide for you? Are you not more valuable than they are? Let's see. Verse 14. He makes grass grow for the cattle and plants for people to cultivate, bringing forth food from the earth, wine that gladdens human hearts, oil that oil to make their faces shine, and bread that sustains their hearts. The trees of the Lord are well watered, the cedars of Lebanon that he planted. There are birds, there the birds make their nests. The stork has its home in the junipers. The high mountains belong to the wild goats. The crags are a refuge for the hyrax. Now, as I'm reading all this, there, I mean, I know this is kind of a general overview for certain ecosystems, but when you're actually out there in those ecosystems and you see a lot more details than what's written on paper, just imagine God created everything and made a specific place for everything, and he knew all those details.